So, um, it's been a while since I had a, uh, since I've done a video, and today we're going to talk about some of the things I've been doing. Um, so, I've got a listing of stuff here on my notepad, I'm trying to stay on topic and, and hoping that, uh, if I organize things, this uh, video will go better. Um, so, I'm um, not sure how long this is going to last. I've got a lot to talk about. I will try and be brief with a lot of this, with a lot of this but I will be elaborating on certain things. Um, so, for number one, I ordered a uh, my first 10 millimeter gun today. Um, I'm waiting for it to process. I bought it through, uh, what is it, uh, Hinterland uh, Outfitters. I've bought and I've bought at least one other handgun from them before. Um, I was looking for a Glock Gen, well, a Glock uh, 20 Gen 4 or a Glock 29. I went to the range on Friday and looked at their listing of guns that they had for rental. They didn't have any 10 millimeters so I was kind of disappointed there uh, but then I started thinking I'm like well with 10 millimeter I'm not gonna be carrying 10 millimeter around uh, I suppose I you know I could have bought a, 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 a gen 29 uh, for carry but uh it's kind of a big round um, and I'm not I mean right now I'm carrying a 45 that should suffice right um, but I, I never envisioned carrying a 10 mil so I started thinking okay well one the uh, the 10 millimeter round uh, in a Glock 20 uh, Glocks tend to be kind of light um, even for 10 millimeters they're kind of they're kind of light uh, I do believe the Glock 20 is right at two pounds empty which is not not bad for a Glock um, I mean that that's probably considered heavy for a Glock but I remember when I bought that Gen 22 I was kind of put off by the uh, perceived recoil um, yes I'm not used to 40 but the 40 at least from that gun uh, the 40s I've shot were all metal and they negated negated a lot of the uh, recoil um, so my thought was okay well if I didn't like the Glock 22 because a lot of the recoil was reaching my hands then I'm probably not going to like either a Gen 29 I mean a Glock 29 or a Glock 20 so uh, I decided oh, well let's look at all metal guns so I looked at the P I believe it's the P45 and 10 millimeter. Uh, P45 uh, Grand Power, um, which is, I mean, they're not all metal, but uh, they have the uh, uh, rotating barrel, and I do have the the Grand Power P11. Um, it it shoots nice. Um, the one that I have is not snappy at all, and that's a nine millimeter uh, subcompact. Um, it's got like a 3.5 inch barrel um, it's not snappy at all so I was thinking that the uh, Grand Power P45 and 10 millimeter would would be good but then I remembered the problems I was having with the P11 and the way it was not going always going fully you know back in the battery uh, so I was like, okay, we don't want that. And then I saw that there was a double stacked 1911 that Rock Island Armory Armory sold, um, and that's that's the one that I bought. I bought the Rock Island Armory Rock Ultra High Capacity 10 millimeter. It's a mouthful. <laughs> um, but the cool thing about that is, is like empty. It's two and a half pounds. So again, I'm not going to be carrying a gun, so I'm not really so worried about heft in regards to, uh, you know, being on my hip. Uh, I'm not going to be carrying that gun. 
uh, I will be taking it to the range. So uh, some feature, it's fully featured. Um, it's got uh, fiber optics, uh, you know, front side. It's got the uh, Novak style uh, uh, rear dovetailed uh, sight, um, which is adjustable for windage and elevation. Um, it's got the it's got a beaver tail. It's got a memory notch. It's got a magwell, uh, a big magwell, and uh, the 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 huge perk is the fact that it's uh, double stacked. So uh, it's it can carry 16 rounds now. Uh, the con is that I only get one mag and I can't find any mags in stock anywhere with the exception of Arms Corps and uh, they're selling those mags for $45 a piece so I might buy one from them and wait until uh, ammo shops and stores are restocked maybe another year or so um, I also did sign up for some notify me when back in stock you know type things for for several of the websites um but it's not a huge deal again i'm not going to be carrying but i when i go to the range i do want more than one mag um so uh so there's that so i bought that maybe an hour ago so it has to go through the process it might take uh a week or two for them to process and it might be another week before my ffl calls me and tells me that it's ready so three weeks to a month uh, so I'm excited there um, so so there there's that so that's bullet one um, I went like I said I went to the range two days ago which is Friday uh, today is the 31st of January um, and I took out two guns I took out my XD9 uh, my two uh, nine millimeter subcompact uh, and I took out this gun so this is my <clears throat> TCM 22 TCM uh, uh, 1911 from Rock Island Armory um, and I shot 50 rounds out of the uh, 1911 and I shot many here 146 rounds out of the the uh <clears throat> the xd9 so the idea that i got with the xd9 is okay i carry the xd the xd45 subcompact um and i had a decent amount of uh stocked ammo uh for that gun uh, so I only have a couple of guns that are, that are chambered in 45 ACP, um, but that's my carry gun, and I hadn't been practicing. I think I went to the range a total of two or three times last year. Uh, I want to go to the range more, but I have to balance. I don't want to shoot up all of my my store my stocked ammo, uh, so I have to find a balance between. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not the only one out there who who has to struggle with this, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, every one of us out there is struggling right now with finding ammo. Uh, so we're at a different point uh, than we were last year. Last year it was hard to find ammo. Now I think it's easier to find ammo, but the ammo prices are way the hell up. Um, so you might not be able to find it locally but what i do is i look online um, i use uh ammo seek and wiki arms to look for for ammo and every day a couple maybe a couple of times a day i'll look on uh, on both of those sites and i'll look at how cheaply i can find nine millimeter and 45 acp uh for range ammo um and what i'll do is if uh for example i know and, and this is what you should do um, you know I'm trying to share information out for people who are new to gun ownership and are struggling to find ammo uh, I have ammo because I've been storing for a while but there are new folks that bought maybe a gun in the last six months to a year that they've got a new gun but a gun is useless without ammo right and everybody's out there you know buying up the ammo either either because they're those new people who don't have any or 
there are people who are hoarding it and trying to resell it, trying to take advantage of uh, the high gun prices. So um, my problem is, is that as I practice, I have to eat into my ammo store. And so I have to find a balance between, okay, how much can I practice and make make my current, I guess, store of ammo last? Um, so last year I ended up going to the range a total of three times thinking, okay, well, I don't want to burn it up. And so, I mean, the risk in doing that is that you become less familiar with uh, you become you're, you're less trained um, you're not ready for when the shit hits the fan you're not ready uh, you're not really you know you're struggling to get the gun uh, on target um, you're not very familiar with trigger pull and uh, coming from low ready to you know to shooting um, and training helps um, so I mean, even just going to the range and shooting, you become familiar with the trigger of your your primary gun, right? Gun, right? So in COVID times, because there's the ammo shortage, um, as well as the fact that you know for a while there, everything was shut down, even ranges. So even though you might have had ammo, you might have might have been able to go to the range, and not everyone out there has a range in their backyard or on their property you know so um so it's been hard on us gun owners um so the tip that i'm get, gonna give is is okay if you're just focusing on local gun stores and, and ammo and they're always out or if they're not out they're only they're limiting how much you can buy one or two boxes you know that type of thing so everyone gets some um another option would be to look online so in order to take advantage of prices don't just go out and, and buy you know a thousand rounds for 800 bucks you know um, because you're not making your money go as far as it could it could so um, my my take on this is okay become familiar with Guess the price of a, a nine millimeter, you know, if that's what you're using, or 45 ACP, if that's what you're using, the current going rate. So right now, nine millimeter is at. Uh, I'm finding it on the average. I mean, a good price for a nine millimeter right nine millimeter right now would be. I mean, hell, the lowest is is a uh, sixty cents a round currently. Um, so if you find anything that's lower than that, go buy it. Um, if you find any, anything that's at that price, it will probably be a good idea to go ahead and buy it. And you don't have to buy a lot. Uh, because if you do this every pay period, if you get paid twice a month and it, it, it adds up after a while. So, you know, buy a box or two or however, however much you can afford, um, and uh and by you know by six months you'll have a decent stash um and then maybe you can go shooting and and come up with a plan to how you can kind of stretch that out while also you know continuing to do what i just said which is you know buy uh, uh as much as you can or as you know if you can only buy a little bit that's as much as you can right so buy what you can while you're you're practicing and shooting um for 45 acp it's it's crazy uh i'm seeing right under a dollar around which is why i decided to start practicing with my xd9 mod 2 instead of my xd45 between the both of them they have the exact same uh, feature set they have the exact same manual of arms uh, the triggers are the same um the only difference is is the the you know one's chambered in 45 and one's chambered in nine mil um so my plan is it to instead of shooting through my 45 acp 
uh, store of ammo. I've got a lot more 9mm and it's cheaper to buy. It seems like it's more plentiful. So I can use the XD9 and and it would benefit me, uh, you know, I guess being that the cost of ammo is cheaper for 9mm. Um, and there really is no con because the guns are the same. The only difference would be the recoil. Uh, but recoil for me isn't a big thing because by the time I pull the trigger, that bullet's already gone down range before recoil effects. You know me. So um, I, don't, I don't worry so much about recoil. It's gone, it's gone. I just reset and pull the trigger again. So, uh, so there's that. So, the, you know, I'm giving, trying to give ideas out there to try and help people, uh, get through this, this time. Um, so I shot 146 rounds of the, uh, from the XD, my two nine millimeter. Um, one of those choked, but I shot a combination of black box, black box federal and Winchester white box but I also threw in four rounds that were sitting on my desk here that choked up another gun and so you know I was going to try and see if I could get one of the, the two guns I was shooting to, 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 to feed through it and it shot three out of those four bad rounds so I took a look at that round and I think the first time I tried to use it it got damaged uh what was i shooting it might have been the uh my px4 my beretta px4 uh when i looked at it um the round was one side was like almost flat so it, it actually jammed up the gun and i had to kind of forcefully kind of you know rack it to get it to unlock up um and I ended up throwing, throwing ammo just downrange. Um, but it was a good showing of the XD9. Um, then I took this out, and I shot 50 rounds of 20 of 22 TCM arm score. Arm score is the only one who makes 22 TCM. Um, it ate it all, um, but there was a problem with this gun. Typically. I always have this problem of, and I need to send this back maybe to to uh, Arms Corps to have them take a look at it. And if I can't get any movement from them, I bought this through uh, Gun Genie, uh, so it has a, a lifetime warranty uh, through uh, you know, GunGenie.com. Um, I can have them take a look at it and figure out what's wrong because what it's doing is it's keyholing. It's not a huge deal, but uh. I don't know if keyholing kind of changes the ballistics of the gun. I know it, you know, it, the rounds tumbling, right? Uh, or maybe even tumbling sideways. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I don't know if that's affecting ballistics and changing, uh, you know, where, where, you know, I'm aiming over here, but it's hitting over here, you know. So um, there, so there was a problem with the keyholing, which is not, it's not too much of an issue, but there was another problem where I was always hitting left. I'm hitting like maybe an inch, inch and a half to the left of where I'm aiming at. And at first I was like, okay, well maybe it's just me, you know, maybe it's, I'm not practicing proper gun fundamentals, whereas, you know, and, and these guns are clear by the way. Um, so, whereas I'm, you know, I might be aiming like, like this, but the gun might be twisted this way. So, you know, guns not aligned properly you know plane wise um, so I focused on that and then I also ensured that I was pulling because I know nine millimeters in particular they're kind of very finicky about more so than other guns about how you pull the trigger because this is not hinged it, it slides straight back so when you pull the trigger you know sometimes you might not be pulling back straight or when you pull it you might be kind of pulling that way but I you know I, I I shot 50 rounds very slow and they were all grouped very close to each other you know like this 
but they were all to the left of the uh, the targets I was shooting, the bullseyes I was shooting. So um, I went back home, and then I I saw I and I know that these are adjustable, adjustable, but the instructions that came with the gun don't tell how to how to adjust the sights. Excuse me. So um, I had to do some research and found information. So this is how to the screw right here. It's not focusing very well. So there is a flat flathead screw right on the side that allows you to adjust windage. So and there is also sure if you can see it so there's an alignment like mark set up here and here this part moves left and right um, so you can see the notches there and you can see how you're moving it um, so what I did was I just clicked it to two clicks clockwise and I, I saw that the alignment moved to the right so what I need to do now, and I did that once I got home. So what I need to do now is I need to go and shoot the gun and see if that improved things. Um, now, <clears throat> this gun here is a 9mm, but it's got the exact same controls or, or sights as the other one. And these, I've, I'm spot on on this one. You know, when I shoot this gun, I'm always hitting near bullseye. I'm hitting where I'm where I I want to hit. Um, but again, the bullet the the bullets are different. Um, so <clears throat> with 22 TCM, I do believe the ammo is uh, at 29, 30 grains for each round. Uh, for you know to protect the projectile weight. So um, it could be the fact that it's just very light. Um, so, um, very sensitive to kind of hand movement, maybe. Don't know. But uh, it's kind of funny that I, I'm, I'm very accurate with this gun, which is not all that much different from this gun. I mean, this one came with two barrels, you know, 22 TCM and 9mm. Uh, one thing I have not done is I haven't shot 9mm through this gun. So maybe I can try that and see. You know that might indicate that maybe there's an issue with the 22 TCM barrel, or uh, maybe you know from there, you know maybe it's the ammo. I'm not sure. So uh, we'll we'll find out. Um, so we're at the 23 minute mark. We're moving along. We're doing pretty good. Um, we're almost done. So next thing I want to talk about is the fact that <clears throat> I got home and I was cleaning this gun. This is a 22 TCM again. And I got tired of seeing that the fiber optic was always dirty. Um, not really, you know, fiber optics is supposed to pop out at you. Like for instance, it did not look like this because there's a reason why. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, so this side is popping, but what I should have done was I should have got some before pictures before I changed the the fiber optic filament that's what I did today so I ordered true glow replacement fibers uh, I got these for was like 14 bucks on uh, Amazon uh, so for these particular guns for all of the Rock Island armories that have uh, fiber optic uh, filaments, these are the replacements. So you want 0 .060 inches. That's the diameter of the uh, filament. Um, they slide in very well, um, but I did hear that there was another uh, 0 .078 actually fits as well, and it fits in a more snug fashion, but. The, the the filament doesn't need to be snug inside it because uh, there there's a method to kind of have it not be sliding around. Um, but we'll keep this here. Um, so 
the, the, the filaments look a lot better. So, whereas the filament that the gun came with, it was just straight up red. Um, and it looked like uh, they might have tried to parkerize the gun or, you know, with the filament in there or something. Because it's very obvious that it's got a lot of dirt and carbon on it. Um, or some type of substance on there that's kind of hindering that glow effect of the uh, filament. So, uh, <clears throat> I got tired of seeing that and decided to try and, and, uh, and change this. So, I wanted to discuss this real quick because, man, this thing is glowing pretty good. So, so these particular ones, and you can get different colors, like, uh, um, you can get some green ones, blue ones, whatever. Uh, but I like this because it's got, it's got a red center, but it's got this, like, this greenish kind of hue um but what i did was uh i took one of the filament that this one of these long pieces out and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cut a piece well first you're supposed to break off what's already in there right so i you know i got a knife and i kind of cut all the way through and then i took pliers and i pulled out the pieces then what i did was uh I took a filament, a long piece, and I stuck it in there. And you, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cut a piece that's a little bit bigger than, than like this. So I have like a little bit of space on each end, right? And uh, and then I took scissors and I kind of clipped it. Uh, and then what I did was I used uh, so the instructions say you can use either a a, a lighter. Or a soldering iron so I had a soldering iron and uh, what I did was uh, I went through the whole long filament because I kept I kept running into issues so the issue I was having was that when I used a soldering iron I would I would do this properly but for some reason there was something keeping the light it something was hindering the light within the filament so it didn't look as bright as it as it is now so I kept you know I figured okay well these are cheap and they, it came with five of them so I went through a whole big long strand just kind of get it right so uh, what ended up happening was that I ended up putting the, the soldering iron iron aside and I put the uh, I used a, uh, a lighter wand uh, one of the long ones that you use for outside and like grills and stuff like that. So <clears throat> the first time I, I did it, so what you're supposed to do is once you get that, that piece in, right, and you have the little, the, the two bits on the side, you take the wand, you take the flame, and you don't put it on the filament. You get it close. You want it to just melt and make a bead. And that does two things. One, it... If you look real, I'm not sure if you can, yeah, you can see the bead right there. So it's not, it's not flat up against the side mount. There's, there's a bit of it protruding out. And what it does is it forms like an area over the mount, mount hole, so that it doesn't slide out. So you want to do that for both sides. So the second thing it does is, is uh, so this filament is made of two pieces. So there's a red piece, and then there's an outside yellow piece. That yellow piece actually fa facilitates a lot of the light gathering. Um, so when I was using the soldering iron, I had to get it wasn't as hot as the flame, so I was almost having to touch it. And what it was doing was it was melting that yellow coating off, which was affecting the light gathering. So when I, you know, I did it like four, or five, probably even six times on each gun. Um, and each time I would like look at it and I was like, damn, it's dark. So I had much better better results with the with the uh, the the lighter wand. Um, so again, you just take the flame, you get it as close as possible until you start seeing the end melt, and you want a bead on there. And then I did the same thing with the other side. And 
it looks a lot it, it looks a lot better than it did even from the side um, so I did that one and then I did this one as well even shadow is gathering light No, the gun's not pointed at me. And this one is clear as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, there. I mean, if if you have one of these guns or something like it, and it has a dirty filament, uh, so filaments can come cheap. You just need to make sure that you have the right size for the particular gun that you have, and then two. You don't need any special tools. You just, you know, you need a knife to, you know, to break what you have out. And then you probably need scissors to kind of cut a piece long enough to fit into your gun as a replacement. And then you need a lighter. And it doesn't have to be a wand. It could be just a regular hand lighter. And you follow the instructions to the letter. The instructions are pretty good here. Um, but again, I had better for me I had better experience with the, the lighter wand than I did the soldering iron um, so there's that um, wow this is good um, I will start doing notes before I make videos from now on because that flowed a lot better than any of my other videos I've done uh, so I want to look through here and make sure that I haven't forgotten anything that is it we are done I'm, I'm actually surprised uh, all in one take as well all right have a good one guys and we will uh, the next video will be uh, when we get the uh, 10 millimeter in all right bye bye